happened when Lex Luger went to New York? Well, you know, when Lex originally came into New York, he came in, came into New York when he first went to work for Titan Sports. Lex came in as a co-host of a program called Body Stars that was promoting the WBF, which was a bodybuilding federation that Vince had started. And Lex was under contract to WCW. And his contract prevented him from wrestling for any competing wrestling company, specifically the WWF at the time. So when Lex came in, Lex came in under contract to the WBF, and he came in as an announcer, not a competitor, not a talent per se, as a co-host for the WBF Body Stars. And in that time, uh, Lex obviously was going to work his time on Body Stars before he began his WWF career as a wrestler as Lex Luger. And on his way there, he had a motorcycle accident. And Lex had reconstructive surgery in his forearm, and it kind of delayed plans for Lex to make his wrestling debut. But so when, that, that really was a workaround, am I right? The WBF thing, that was a workaround for his Crockett contract where he wasn't allowed to perform for another wrestling company or something? A workaround sounds so shady. It was simply obeying the laws of the you contract are, and that he was not ear. able to wrestle for a competing wrestling organization, but there was nothing in the contract that prevented him from competing as a bodybuilder or being a co-host on a television show. You make it sound so devious. I wish you could see the evil, evil smile on Bruce Pritchard's face right now as he tells that story that even he himself doesn't believe he is, uh, his, his spin cycle is out of control. It's not a matter of belief. It's the truth. It's what actually took place and what actually happened. And, and why Lex, don't you just say it was a workaround? Just say it was a workaround. It wasn't, or it was yes, simply it obeying the contract and okay. obeying the law. All right. So really the goal in trying to sign the guy is to just stick it to Crockett, take one of the top guys they've pushed really hard for a long time, get him on your TV and use a workaround to do it. He screws all that up and hurts his arm. Now what? Listen to what you said. We're going to screw Crockett by taking Lex Luger. Why else, really? would you, why else would you sign him to go pose for a failing bodybuilding competition? Come on. You don't work there anymore. Tell the truth. What's wrong with I you? Think, I think J.J. Dillon said it best when he said that Lex Luger is the finest example of potential that was never actually realized. And, you know, yeah, Lex was a talent. Lex was a big name at WCW, and the opportunity came for Lex to come over, so he came over, and there were big plans for Lex. Lex had the body type. Lex had the look that obviously was big at that time. Um, the only thing Lex really lacked was personality. Did he come in with a bigger contract than most of the boys in the WWF locker room at the time? Well, when Lex came, when Lex came in as the WBF commentator, Lex did have a contract that had a dollar amount attached to it. When Lex switched over to a wrestling contract, he was on a contract like everybody else that didn't necessarily have a guarantee other than opportunity. So you're saying there was no heat from the locker room when he came over on that WBF? There was perceived heat, yeah. yeah there was heat. There was big-time heat. Because everyone perceived that for Lex to come over, he had to come over for guaranteed money. He had to come over for a big guarantee. Well, he did for the WBF. He came over for the WBF. Yeah, all those guys, all the WBF guys had heat because they were being paid pretty uh, good, big money. They were being paid big money in comparison to the guys – that were working every night in the ring on the road, busting their humps and not making a lot of money at the time. So, you know, take a stab. What do you think his WBF number was? God, I have no idea. More than 250? No. So he would have been taking a pay cut. He was making more than that at Crockett. Well, it depends on how you look at it because at the, at the end of that rainbow was a WWF deal where the potential was unlimited. And where he had an opportunity to make a lot more money if he got over. So was there any question when he got hurt as to the legitimacy of the injury or no? 
Oh God, no, no. He he had reconstructive surgery on his forearm. I mean, he had plates and uh, a lot of screws, and he messed himself up. 